Throughout the years, one of the best parts of Grace has been the relationship between students and teachers. What you see at Grace is the way teachers pour themselves into the lives of their students and the way they disciple them in and out of the classroom. This is something rare and that value can't be measured. I can't express what it means to me as a parent to have so many wonderful teachers and coaches investing in my children's lives, both academically and spiritually. Anybody who was bold enough to fly overseas, serve and teach for free, is somebody of strong character and even stronger faith. In 1997, two years before the opening of Grace International School, a downturn in the Asian economy found the owners of the athletic club in bankruptcy. The facilities were repossessed by the bank and put up for sale. Previously too expensive for Grace to purchase outright, the board began exploring what would be necessary for Grace to purchase the World Club facility. Recognizing the positive impact that Grace was already having in the lives of their missionary families, five mission organizations provided part of the funding necessary to make an offer on the property. Because of the Lord's provision on June 15, 2001, Grace International School was able to purchase the foreclosed property from the bank. Several friends of Grace, such as Pratt and Yeen, had a great love for Grace and had a vision for what God would do in and through the school. They personally bought property around the existing facility and allowed Grace to use this land for future expansion. The World Club land property was such a blessing for over 17 years. It was clear that it was exactly what we needed to become established as a school. It was meeting a huge need in the missions community, and we knew that the school would continue to grow for many years. In 2008, the school's leadership were feeling led by the Lord to begin exploring the purchase of a larger property that would help the school continue to expand. Countries across Asia were becoming more hostile to foreign missionaries and local kingdom workers. Because of this, Chiang Mai saw more and more Christian workers basing their ministry in the area while continuing their work beyond the Thai border. With Chiang Mai as their base, they were able to travel in and out of their country of ministry. Over the next several years, Grace would plan and fundraise for the purchase of new land. In 2010, 39 acres of rice fields were purchased outside the town for the future expansion of Grace International School. Little did they know how quickly this land would come into need. I was chairman of the board at the time when someone brought me a piece of paper saying, uh, turn over the uh, administration of the sports club to us by the end of the month or we will take you to court. A few days later, I got another handwritten note, turn over the deeds of the administration building to us by the end of the month or we take you to court. I didn't know what to do but get on my face before the Lord and say, God, this is too big for me. And so, uh, sure enough, we turned it all over to him and he has helped us get through this. After years of losses and appeals, Grace was ordered to vacate the property and pay to restore the facilities to its original condition. Additionally, Grace would not be compensated for the original purchase price of the complex. Once again, Grace International School found itself without a campus. However, as God has done many times before, he again demonstrated that what we may see as the closing of doors is actually the opening of brand new doors. As it turned out, a brand new school was built nearby, a few months prior to Grace's eviction from the World Club land complex. This new school had a beautiful campus with lots of unused space. They agreed to let Grace use some of that space for three years. This gave Grace the time needed to plan, construct, and fundraise for the new campus. 